fellow Toastmasters and guests, we welcome our special presenter, Nathan Co-March. got a really cool guest for you now. One of the stars from the Penn and Teller TV series. Uh, now he has performed all over this world. He's amazed crowds of mind-blowing stunts. So dynamic. Ooh. He's groundbreaking. You know how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nathan Comar. Hello, Wyndham Toastmasters. It is such a privilege uh, to be here with you guys this morning. Uh, you guys are on a, on a big screen off to the side, so uh, great to see you. Ryan, a familiar face. Thomas, I love the restaurant background. Uh, that is awesome, my friend. Uh, Joshua, good to see you, sir. Uh, welcome, guys. So uh, imagine this. It's sometime in the mid-90s. Uh, you're on a date. You're headed into a comedy club. You feel as you guys go in, there's that stale cigarette air. It's still the 90s. And slowly you realize that you're the only couple in the room. And maybe you're just early, right? But, but, but as it gets closer and closer to the time when the show begins, you realize that nobody else has shown up for the show and you guys are seated dead center right in front of the stage. The opening comic comes out. He is full of energy as if there's a crowd of 200 people in front of him. And it's just incredibly awkward, right? You're unsure of even being here in the first place because apparently nobody else came out to make it to the show. And it just, there's something that feels off about it. And then the second comic comes out and he's full of energy and he does his show as if it's, you know, 300 people and he's, he's nailing it. And it just, it just feels really, really weird. And then the headliner comes out and he's like, Hey guys, can I, do you mind if I, if I pull up a chair with you and he orders a drink and he sits there and he tells you these hilarious stories that have you laughing hard and often, but what you don't know, is that he's actually doing his act. He's presenting his act exactly as he presents it, but aware of his surroundings, aware of the specific circumstances on this night, he's completely altered the way he's delivering it to literally meet you where you are. Uh, Greg Dean is the guy I, I first heard that story from, and uh, he uses it. He says the moral of that is do the show that's in front of you, not the one that's in your head. That as presenters, one of our biggest tools in our toolbox is empathy, is the ability to understand our audiences where they are and to be able to adapt the way we present to the different situations that we find ourselves in. It's a different kind of presentation if you're in a stadium for 10,000 people than it is in a theater of a few people than it is in a boardroom of 10 people. And that has never been more true than with the switch to virtual presentation. So a quick little background, um, picture one more time, uh, picture that you're like 11 years old and you're at, uh, you're at a dinner party that your parents have hosted in your home and you get to, you get to sit at the uh, adult table and you're being very quiet, very polite, very self-aware. And one of your parents' guests borrows a dollar bill and he crumples it up and he slowly lets go. And that sucker is floating in midair right in front of you. I went crazy. I, I, uh, it was one of the most joyful memories of my childhood. It was something that fascinated me. I loved the idea both that it seemed and felt incredibly real, but I knew there was some kind of trick behind it, and, and that really interested me. And that grew, that, that passion, both chasing that feeling and wanting to share it with other people, grew into a career that, that fortunately uh, carried me around the world, gave me the opportunity to perform in venues that I, I had always wanted to perform in and to appear on television and do some other cool stuff. So fast forward to this spring and I'm coming back from a trip, I'm coming back from a performance and I'm talking to my girlfriend, Kelly, who uh, works, uh, she works for the UCF library. And she's excited in part, as odd as it sounds, because they're beginning to have a plan for her to be able to work from home. And she would love the idea of working from home. And I'm excited about it. I work from home in my office. Oh man, if she's working here too, that'll be great. And it takes like an hour for me to realize, wait, if they're moving people out of an office, there are going to be no events. And it took, it just, it just, I, I didn't even, I didn't want to acknowledge that, right? Because it meant for me, not only no income, but it also meant um, the thing that I identify myself with, the thing that's been incredibly important to me in my life was just suddenly gone, right? And so over the past six months has been the process of kind of pulling out of that and figuring out how to do what I do 
not just in person, but also how to make it play in a virtual medium. And it's been an incredibly difficult process, right? At the beginning of the pandemic, uh, people were putting a camera in the back of the room and they were doing like the show that they would do on stage, but they were doing it just for the camera and it, and it just didn't really work. So over these past six months, uh, building uh, literally a studio in my, I'll give you guys real quick, I'll give you guys a peek at this is, uh, this is what the room that we're in right now looks like if you were just to the side. This is literally in the middle of my uh, living room. Uh, the one concession, when I was looking at you guys over to the side there, uh, the one concession to normalcy for Kelly is that we still have the couch uh, with the TV in front. Um, so that's, that's still over to the side there, but that's what's going on. And it's been a process of not just figuring out the technology and all of that, but, but also trying to figure out how to make this stuff work. And so what I want to offer to you guys today are a few kind of top level insights into the difference between virtual and in-person presentation, some strategies for making it effective, and then we'll open up as well. We'll have some time. Uh, if there's some specific questions you guys I, I have, I'd be delighted to to address those. The first thing is that this is an intimate medium. When we're talking about doing the show in front of you versus the one that's in your head, a great example of this, uh, if you had a chance, you know, one of the great examples that we have in front of us is that both political conventions were, were kind of online events. And the best for looking at what we're looking at is, is the DNC convention only because it was entirely virtual. So it's an opportunity to see a bunch of people who are seasoned presenters who speak professionally and how they handle the challenge of being alone in a room with a camera. And what I found, and, and your mileage uh, may vary, I found that, that the ones who struggled the most and the ones that felt the most awkward were the ones who like that comic in that club in the 90s brought the same energy as if they had a crowd in front of them. They had the podium there uh, and they tried to, and the, some of the most effective talks were the talks that understood the intimacy of this medium. And that's the most important thing to, to, to bear in mind with this medium is this is, you're talking to the camera as if you're sharing with just a single person. And that becomes more important the bigger that group gets. So if you're in a group of three or four, they're seeing each other and they're bouncing back and forth and it can be more of a conversation. But the larger it gets, you really are just talking to these people one-on-one, -on -one, despite the fact that they're within an audience. Um, and it's really, we've got this great example of going back and looking and seeing uh, the people who sit down, who look dead at the camera, who talk to you as if you're sitting across the table from them in the kitchen. And it's a, it's a really big difference. Um, one of the other big things, uh, and this is, we'll kind of pull this in, is a visual variety, right? So instead of staring at, uh, instead of staring at, at the same thing the entire time, giving people something different to look at. So you have moments where you can get things in there. Uh, that's also powerful with how you use your background. So here we've got the logo is a little too big there. That's fine. Uh, uh, a, uh, a thing, obviously Zoom backgrounds are a big thing now. One thing I like to keep in mind is you're looking for something that's gonna create focus for you that puts you front and center, but there are also interesting little elements and especially things that express your personality that are behind you, that give us as an audience a window into kind of who you are. So I've got uh, water obviously for between takes. Uh, we've got this goofy little uh, monkey guy there that coordinates with the palette of the rest of the studio. Uh, this is a silhouette that was cut of me when I was performing at the Magic Castle. This is a uh, eight by 10 from a magician that I admired growing up and uh, happened to live in Orlando towards the end of his life. So there are these little pieces of myself that are there, but they're not overwhelming and they're not distracting and it still brings the central focus right there, right? While we're talking about physical environment and things, the biggest factor for your success on a technical level, and we're not going to talk a lot about uh, tech stuff, but is hardwiring your internet. Um, if you're doing any kind of presentation where it really matters that your content get delivered to your people, have that ethernet cable and it's the most solid and guaranteed way. The other thing, and this translates very well from, from live performance, is knowing that technical issues are going to happen. And what's going to determine your success or failure is, is the spirit, is the mindset with which you embrace those. So there are going to be moments where the mic cuts out. There are going to be moments where, you know, I'm distracted by having to do something over here at the computer. A couple of techniques here, right? Um, the first is just there's an inner state of calm that you have and control and projecting that to the audience. What we as an audience need from you at that moment is a sense that things are under control, that you're relaxed, 
that everything is going to keep moving because if you're stressed out, we become stressed out. It's a sympathetic reaction. We also need you to keep up. There's a real skill and it's one that I'm learning and getting better at of kind of splitting your mind so that while something is going on that you're fixing yourself, if you're handling your tech, you're able to create a layer of conversation that makes sense, that's interesting, that still keeps things moving. And one way of doing that is to just slowly state things that are actually happening. So if I'm filling in here, it's like, okay, so here we are, it's Thursday, it's about noon, and now we have it fixed, you know? So it gives you something that's, that's kind of filling out as you're covering there. I'm gonna, I wanna stop right here, and I know we have a very little time to actually deal with the content. Um, are there any questions or any issues you guys have come up with as you've been dealing in the virtual world? I respect that. Awesome, guys. Okay. All right. That sounds, that sounds really good. Uh, perfect. So that is, uh, that is the heart and soul of it. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, happy, to, happy to handle those. Uh, if you guys want to experience for yourself what, um, it's been kind of exciting. I was, I was talking to Ryan earlier. What we're witnessing right now in variety entertainment is kind of like what was happening at the very beginning of movies, right? As people were figuring out, kind of like the beginning of the pandemic, they just stick a camera in the back of the room and do the show they'd always been doing. And it took folks like Eisenstein, Meliers, and these early directors to figure out ways to, to translate that into a truly immersive experience. And right now, that same thing is happening when it comes to interactive shows that are going back and forth. And we very rarely get the chance to actually witness that as it's happening. Um, so this is a cool time. So if you haven't had a chance to experience a show like that, I encourage you to, uh, just so happens, uh, I'll be doing one Saturday sponsored by the Forum Virtual Theater uh, in Victoria, British Columbia. Ryan's got the details on that. You can also contact me if you'd like the details on that. But even if not my show, there's some really cool things that are happening uh, on Zoom and I, uh, I encourage you guys to experience it. So. Thank you so much, Nathan. It was My a pleasure. pleasure getting to listen to you and learn from you, someone that does this every single day. My pleasure. It's been, yeah, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. <laughs>